last 10 years, I've done hundreds of drawings. And from all of those drawings, I would say that I have learned three very big, important lessons that I want to share with you to help you become a better artist and to improve your artwork. For a long time, I thought you're either a watercolor artist or a digital artist, but surely not both. Surely you can't be just as good at lots of different mediums. As I went on and I did more drawings and started using different mediums, first color pencil and then pastels, watercolors, and even digital art, I started to realize something that's actually really important. You see, I thought that when you started learning to draw with a new supply, it would be like learning to draw or paint paint all over again, that you'd be basically starting from scratch. But this wasn't really the case. And I found that every time I started using a new supply, it would take a bit of getting used to at the start, but very quickly I was able to create realistic drawings that were up to my usual standard of supplies that I'm used to drawing with. And there is a very simple reason for this, because all of the fundamentals of art are basically the same. So when I then jumped into colored pencil drawings like this one, I was able to create this realistic result fairly easily because those fundamental skills that I learned from graphite drawing was fully transferable to color pencil. But what exactly are the fundamentals that you need to get good at? Proportions. You need to get good at being able to create an accurate sketch for your drawing or painting. Form. You need to basically understand how to make something look 3D. And you do this by also understanding value, lighting, and depth. Another key fundamental to understand is the different types of edges and also what texture is and how to create it in your artwork. And if you want to draw or paint in color, then it's also really important to understand color theory as well. I get that seeing all of these fundamentals is probably a little bit scary and intimidating. If you want, I have got a free mini training on the fundamentals that you need to know for realistic drawings. I'll link that at the top of the description if you do wanna check it out. It's a nice introduction to each of the fundamentals and the basics of what you need to know. So I'll leave that down below. Practice Practicing the fundamentals is so important because it is the things that is going to make your drawing realistic, but also it just makes trying new things, new mediums, new supplies so much easier. To explain lesson two, take a look at these three drawings. Which one do you think is the oldest one that I did and which is the most recent? I'd assume that most of you probably think that this one is my most recent because it looks the best out of three in terms of skill and standard. And that this one is probably my oldest one because it doesn't look as good. So instead of the order being like this, it was actually completely the other way around. But what does this mean? Mean? Does this mean that I have got worse? Well, not necessarily. Let me explain what's happening here. So normally when we think about our improvement, we think about it like this. We normally think that with each drawing that we do, it's just going to get better and better and that our skill is just a straight line. If we think this, this can lead to a lot of problems. We can become perfectionists. We can put too much pressure on ourselves to always make our drawings better than our last drawing. And this doesn't actually work. This is what really happens. With each drawing, normally at the start, you will see a bit of improvement, but then maybe one drawing that you do, you're not as focused and then maybe it gets better again. And then you have a really bad day. Maybe you just didn't plan out your drawing. Over time, what you'll see happening is that your drawings will get better, but it's not going to be at this linear rate. You're going to have bad days. You're going to have good days. You're going to have drawings that are really good. Not every drawing is going to be better than the one before, but if you zoom out and look at a period of maybe six months to a year, you will see that our skill after six months is way better than our skill level at the start. I know that I would always get really scared of doing a bad drawing. I tried to avoid it. I wanted my drawings to get better and better. The problem with this is that I found I was scared to try new things, to experiment, to draw things that I wasn't used to. So I stayed in my comfort zone. I realized that bad drawings are just part of it. You cannot avoid them. We need to make those mistakes. Mistakes are what get us to that next level of skill because we learn from mistakes. We learn how to get better. This one was so good because this was a subject I was familiar with. I was using my usual techniques and my best colored pencils. This drawing was a challenge drawing. I was trying to see if I could 
do a whole portrait with only five pencils. And like I said, when you try new things, you're going to make more mistakes and it won't be up to your usual standard. This one was a little bit different. I was trying to draw something that I wasn't really very confident drawing, which was the hair. It was new territory for me. If you just had these three drawings to judge my skin off, then you could probably assume that maybe I had got worse over time. Here you can see I've filled out the timeline a little bit. You can see that the skill hasn't completely decreased. What's happened is that along the way, I have done some challenges. I've tried some new things, tried to draw new types of things that I wasn't familiar with. Judge your progress over a longer period of time and don't put too much importance on any one specific drawing. What's wrong with this drawing? When I was doing this drawing, I made a mistake. If I had done it like three or four years ago, I would have been really annoyed at myself and really frustrated. And it's just this little dot here. I must have been drinking some water or something and just got a little bit of a water drop onto the drawing. This is the type of thing that would make me really annoyed at myself. I would get really angry and down on myself for making this mistake. And I would really struggle to enjoy the rest of the drawing drawing because I would just focus on that mistake. It's all I would be able to see. Even if the rest of the drawing had been done really great and I was really proud of the rest of it, I would be too much of a perfectionist with my drawings and I would let these little mistakes make the drawing process less enjoyable for myself. But as I did more and more drawings and the years went by, I started to notice something and it completely changed how I viewed these mistakes. When I looked back at that drawing maybe a few weeks or a few months later I noticed that I couldn't really remember the mistake that I'd made and I couldn't spot it when I looked at the drawing and this is when I realized that when we're working on drawings when we make these little mistakes quite often we are very over dramatic about it we think our mistakes are a much bigger deal than they are and that they are way more noticeable and quite often if you ask someone else to look at your drawing and spot the mistake they won't be able to notice it and even if you point out the mistake they still might not really know what you're going on about. <laughs> So now when I do my drawings, if I make a mistake, I try not to make a big deal out of it. I don't let it bother me and I don't let it ruin the entire drawing experience. Instead, if I do make a mistake, then I finish the drawing and I look back at it in a few weeks or a few months. And if I don't notice the mistake, then great. But if it still sticks out to me, I just accept the mistake if it's something that can't be fixed or I try to fix it. Because another thing that I've noticed is that drawings are a lot more fixable than we think they are. And this is something that became really apparent to me when I did a video with my husband Darby where he did a drawing as a beginner and then I tried to fix it. I was so surprised at how much I could fix the drawing and just how much I could change. Sometimes we can't fix the mistake like when I got that water drop on my graphite drawing. And in those cases, we do just kind of have to accept it and learn from the mistakes that we make because you're never going to be able to avoid mistakes that are natural part of the drawing process they will happen and they will still be a little bit annoying. But the lesson that I learn is that more often than not, they're not as big of a deal as we think they are, that we can fix mistakes a lot more than we think we can, and that it's important to not let these little mistakes ruin our entire drawing process. But learning those fundamentals that I spoke about earlier will really help you to make less mistakes when you are drawing or painting. And if you do wanna see how I fix common beginner drawing mistakes, then check out this video where I do get my husband to create a realistic drawing and then my job, my challenge is to try and fix it as best as I can. So check out this video next and I'll see you there. Bye everybody.